on Australia's business channel. This is Media Week. Hello, welcome to the program. Ahead, new looks for two magazines this week. How BRW has managed to survive where other weekly news magazines have failed. And InStyle gets a revamp as competition gets set to ramp up among the women's glossies this year. We'll be talking to the editors of both titles on the show. But first, News Corp has downgraded its forecasts for full year earnings, in part due to the Australian division. But second quarter earnings beat consensus, with net profit doubling to $2.4 billion and revenue up 5% to $9.4 billion. Our co-host James Manning, the editor and publisher of Media Week, is here with the details. James, good to see you in the new look surround. <laughs> Just um, looking at these results, uh, of course, we did see during the quarter News Corp buying consolidated media here in Australia, and that helped to boost those numbers? Yeah, getting more, more all the revenue from Fox Sports, uh, another 25% of Foxtel, yeah, it came, came in right at the end of, end of that quarter, so it, it did help boost those figures, and we'll see a, a better flow next, next, uh, next results. Just looking at, of course, we did hear about the Australian newspapers uh, being one of those divisions that were weak, and we did hear the, the President and uh, Chief Operating Officer, Chase Carey, speaking about that. Here's a little of what he had to say. In Australia, we've been hammered by an economy that we keep hoping has hit bottom, yet seems to continue to find new lows. This was clearly evident during the holiday season, where we were unable to benefit from the seasonal advertising lift as we had in prior years. As stated before, we're actively working to restructure this business for the future. We're highly focused in addressing these challenges. However, at the same time, we don't want to lose sight of the greater great momentum in our broader businesses. We remain more excited than ever about our opportunities, especially as we get closer to the proposed split, which we're confident will position us to unlock even greater value for our shareholders. So, James, looking at, at that, I mean, will be, they be hoping that this is just a, a cyclical issue? Yeah, not structural, absolutely. Uh, but interesting you talked about, you know, the end of last year, they get a lot of retail advertising normally, people wanting to... Uh, Advertisers wanting to sell their, their Christmas stock to uh, the consumers. Looks like a lot of that sort of didn't happen last year or some of those advertisers have gone elsewhere or just because that market was depressed. They'll be hoping it picks up and comes back. Looking at all across all the other divisions, how did they fit? Yeah, look, uh, cable TV's been going wonderfully for them for the last few years. Again, it was good. It's there, um, you know, uh, Fox News in the state, the regional sport, sports uh, channels they have, uh, Nat Geo, FX, uh, channels like that doing really well for them. Um, just looking, I guess, too, of course, we're hearing there a little bit about that, the clock's ticking down now to the split of the company. Um, what did they say? It's, it's what, on track for June? Yeah, it's still coming. They're still very positive. There was a statement from uh, Rupert Murdoch in the uh, release that came out with the results saying, look, he's still very confident about the future of uh, both parts of the company post-split. And just, of course, we should mention Foxtel as well, the Australian subscription TV provider. Of course, News Corp, half the owner, but also Telstra as well, both out with results today. Um, just take us through the, the Foxtel results. Yeah, look, subscriber numbers are up very slightly, around about just on, just below 2.3 million. So it's probably not a bad result given the, you know, the, the year we've had. Um, revenues up a little bit too, earnings up 12%, total revenues up about 7%. Um, and that, that comes off the back, we've talked before about the, the price changes they've made. There's, there's not really been any discounting. Um, new Chief Executive um, Richard Frudenstein talked about, you know, with some expectation he might drop those prices. That hasn't really happened. In fact, some people will be paying more, but they do seem to have tried to simplify the, the package structure for people. All right, thanks for that, James. Well, let's now, of course, focus on the fact that News Corp Chairman and CEO Rupert Murdoch features on the cover of the new look BRW. The revamp for the weekly business news magazine also extends to the website alongside the launch of an iPad app. But weekly news magazines are meant to be in trouble. Newsweek's gone digital only and The Week closed down last year in Australia. So what's BRW's secret? Well, we're joined now by BRW editor James Thompson to tell us more. James, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, what, what are you doing? Do you think it's because, you know, you, you sort of specialise in that business area that, that you've been able to, to grow? I think part of the reason is our specialisation in the business area. It's a, it's a, it's a real focus for, for readers who, who want value, I guess. Uh, if you can think of, when you read a business, 
business magazine. If you get one bit of information that helps you save money or make money, then the return on your, your little investment every week is, is quite substantial. So I think that gives us a bit of a, a bit of a buffer, I guess. And the other thing is we've got a very long history in, our, in business media in Australia, and, and that's a, a great legacy to deal with. You've done a, a massive sort of redesign on the magazine today, first, first new issue. You've also substantially changed your web offering and introduced an iPad app. Um, it's a space most publishers think they need to be in with the iPad apps. Is there much demand, do you think, uh, from your readers at this stage? Yeah, we did a lot of research before uh, developing the iPad app and it was clear that they, they, they wanted it and uh, we've, had to, we've had to meet that challenge. It's been good for us in that we've been able to watch the development of other iPad apps within Fairfax, like the SMH and the Age and the AFR's iPad app. And we've been able to, to I guess, cherry pick some of the, the best parts of those to, to create the, the app we've launched today. And there'll be a free trial initially, is that right? And, and what are you sort of looking at charging then down, down the track for that? So the app's free to, to subscribers, uh, but following the, the free trial, which uh, will run for, for the next little while, it'll be $4.49 an issue. Uh, so we think that's uh, pre pretty competitive and uh, pretty compelling um, for, for, for readers who want to who wanna try out the, the app and, and hopefully upgrade to, to full subscribers as well. You talked a little bit about today about the power of the BRW brand and, and getting maybe in touch with some readers who, who might have lapsed. Um, tell us about your reader and are they much different from, say, the person that gets your daily uh, newspaper in the group, the Financial Review? Yeah, we, we think they are. They're, they're, they're more focused perhaps on the, the, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial side of things. So that they, they've got a, they, they might be a business owner or a business manager, but they've got that entrepreneurial mindset. So, that, so the passion that an entrepreneur brings to, to, to the way they do business is, is really instilled, we think, in our reader. So that's what we're trying to pick up on, that the, the passion and enthusiasm that entrepreneurs have will we'll shine through in, the, in, in what we focus on, really that growth, wealth, leadership uh, focus that BRW has always had. You've uh, come over from uh, private media, the, the publisher of Crikey, as has the, the new BRW publisher as well, Amanda Gome. What, what's sort of your, been your aims in starting at BRW? Has it been mainly focused on, on this new look or do you have more changes in mind? Oh look, I mean I think t uh, getting, getting to today has been the, the, the short term focus. It's a, a very big day launching a, a new look magazine and a new app and a new, uh, new website. So that's been the initial focus but we are changing the way we do things. You'll see more um, more daily news through the website and I think in the magazine you'll see uh, some of the, the longer deeper stories that really work in that magazine format. So we'll, we'll be sort of building on those changes as we go throughout the year but uh, it, it's great to be able to, to have these new platforms to, to show off our journalism and, and, and really see what we can do with the platforms, experiment a bit and, and, and push them and see where they go. It's good to see an editor who gets a few bylines in the magazine as well. Um, you were very good timing, I guess, with the Murdoch story. The, um, uh, you've written uh, the 10 threats to News Corp. We've just been talking about the impending split. What are a couple of the highlights of that? Well, I, I think uh, the obvious ones are, are succession. Uh, it's still a, a vexed question within the, the Murdoch family and within the News Corp family, I guess. Um, and it's, it's not clear what the, what the natural succession is, particularly in that, uh, that new News Corp newspaper business that, that will get split off. Robert Thompson's going to lead it for now, but, but who long term? Uh, that's, that's a well, vexed question. Paul Barry and another Fairfax publication last weekend threw up the possibility of Elizabeth Murdoch. Uh, well, I, I she think, hasn't been talked about much prior to this no, being but, a candidate. But she's, she's absolutely a candidate and she'd, she'd be a great candidate. I, I think all the children, uh, James and Lachlan, are, are probably in the mix there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, but it's murky at the moment because there's no standout who seems to really want the job. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if that develops in the next few years. Mm -hmm. Just coming back to the iPad app uh, for, for BRW, have you had to put on more staff to, to be able to do it? You know, is it is it sort of very difficult to kind of get the content from the magazine on, onto the app? No, look, I mean, it, it's we haven't had to put on any more staff. It, it, it's something that we've been able to to to, to build using our, our current capacities and uh, with a bit of help from within the financial review group. Um, but it, it's it, it, is, it is a process. You do have to think specifically about building things like interactive galleries and videos and and and, and, uh, and interactive graphics. You do have to consider that. So that, that's that's something that we're, uh, we're we're getting used to at the moment. And, and as we as we you know as we roll through the year, we'll, we'll get better and better at that. And uh, we look forward to seeing what we can what we can try. I guess. And you'll be feeling your way with your ad people as, as well. I guess whether the offering on the iPad and the web. Uh, are sort of 
additional advertisers one or three as well as the magazine or they want to go in individually yeah the the the, the audience that the advertisers so, sorry do have a, a sense of uh, across the financial review group of dealing with an app and with online already so it's not like this is totally foreign to them and we have a very experienced sales team that will be able to uh, to be able to to show off the the new BRW app uh, in its in its full glory I guess just finally wanted to ask you if you had an outlook for, for circulation and, and where you'd like it to be. Uh, what's your sort of feeling of how this year is going to go in terms of that? that yeah, look, it's hard to say at the moment. We've hovered around 40,000 for the last five years, which is, uh, which is a, a pretty good effort in a, in a market that's uh, declined for a lot of magazines. Um, so so we, need to, we need to hold the line there and continue to grow the circulation over time. But of course we've got these other platforms that we want to grow too, so that's the challenge, to get the, the growth across the board uh, throughout the rest of 2013. James, great to talk to you today. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks a lot, guys. James Thompson, their editor of BRW. We're going to take a quick break on Media Week. Coming up, another magazine gets a revamp. We'll be talking to InStyle's new editor, Kirsten Galliott, next.